What's up YouTube, Eric Vasquez here from Teach Me To Design. And I know a lot of times I say I'm excited, but today I'm really excited for this design tutorial because I'm gonna be giving you an in-depth look at how to create a stunning movie poster design using a handful of visual effects and compositing techniques that I use in my everyday professional workflow. Anytime that I'm creating posters for film, for television, or for sports. So today we'll be focusing on sort of a supernatural kind of poster design, so be sure to let me know what's your favorite supernatural movie poster in the comments below. All right, so without any further ado, let's get into it. All right, so let's jump over here in Photoshop where we're going to set up a new document that's about 11 inches wide by 17 inches tall with a resolution set to 300 and color mode RGB. And then from there, let's go ahead and click create to set up our document. Now, the first thing we wanna do here once we set up our file is go to the file menu and we're going to go to place embedded to open up our first stock image here. All right, now if you've watched some of my videos before, you'll know that I like bringing images in using the file place embedded method because it automatically brings everything in as a smart object with the file name already in there. So once we've done that, the first thing we're going to do here is create a couple of selections. So I'm gonna press P to get my pen tool and I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm just going to select the sword, the face and the hands. Okay, so I'm gonna start tracing by zooming in and just grabbing those areas of the skin and the sword first. Great, now that we've created our selection, we're gonna go ahead and press Command, Control, and Return on the keyboard to activate it, and then click on the layer mask icon down here at the bottom of the palette. And we now just have that selection made. So what we're going to do at this point is just apply a couple of quick adjustment layers. To start, hold the Alt Option key and click on the adjustment layer icon, and then go ahead and choose black and white, and be sure to check off this box here that says Use Previous Layer to Create a Clipping Mask. Now, once you've added that one, we're just going to reduce the opacity to 20 by pressing the number two on the keyboard. Then select your smart object layer again and return back down to the bottom of the layers panel to add another black and white adjustment layer. Now, this time what we wanna do is change the blend mode of this layer to soft light. And let's go ahead and leave the opacity set to 100. And what that's going to do is just give us some nice contrast here. All right, so we've desaturated it a little bit with the first one and then added a little bit of contrast with the second. Now select that first adjustment layer, hold the shift key and select your smart object, press command G to put it into a group folder, double click group one, and we're just going to rename this layer something like skin and sort. Now let's go ahead and go into that folder. And what I wanna do is hold the alt option key and click and drag that smart object out of the folder. All right, so I have to move it down one more time. I'll select it and press Command, Control, and the left bracket on the keyboard to make sure that I move that outside of the folder. And then we're gonna hold Control, click on the layer mask, and choose Delete Layer Mask. What we're gonna do is create another selection around the outside of the hood here. So we're gonna do the same thing really quickly with the pen tool to create another selection. Okay, so now we have our next selection and we'll once again press Command, Control, and Return or Enter on the keyboard to activate that selection before applying a layer mask. And we now have this isolated from the skin and the sword. So let's go ahead and hold the Alt Option key and we're going to apply two adjustment layers here, starting with levels. Check off this box to use previous layer to create a clipping mask. And now what we're gonna do is just move this left slider in a little bit to add some contrast. Somewhere around 22 looks pretty good. And then let's leave the other sliders as is. Now select the smart object layer again, return to the adjustment layer icon and apply a black and white adjustment layer. And let's just go ahead and move this one on top of the levels adjustment for a second. And we can leave this set to normal and 100%. So we're completely desaturating the cloak and the hair and everything else separate from the skin and the sword. So now let's select that black and white adjustment layer, hold shift and select our smart object here, and then once again, press command G to put it into a group folder, double click on the text and change it to cloak. Now, what I'd like to do at this point before we go ahead is just make sure to go ahead and save your work. So I'm gonna save this really quickly before we go on. 
So once you've saved your work, we're going to select both of these folders, press Command-J to duplicate them, and then hold the Control key and click on them and choose Convert to Smart Object. So we're basically merging these two layers together, or these two folders together, onto a new Smart Object. Now, once we've done that, we're going to go up here to the Image menu and choose Adjustments, Shadows, Highlights. Now, right away, you can see that this pulls out a lot of detail from the shadow areas especially. So I like to use this a lot anytime I'm doing compositing work to get those extra details to come out of the areas which are maybe a little bit too dark in an image. And when I do this, I always move the highlights to zero, just to zero them out at first. And I mainly just focus on these first three sliders here under shadows. So for the amount, I'm going to reduce this to somewhere around 15 or so. And then for the tone, I'm going to set that to 50, so that's okay as it is. And then 30 pixels for the radius and click OK. All right, so you'll now see that we have a merged smart object here on top of our two folders. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and apply a layer mask to this, press B to get my brush tool, and I want to make sure that I have a medium to large size black soft brush selected with an opacity setting of around 20% or so. And what I'm going to do here is zoom out a bit and remove some of this brighter shadow detail area from the bottom and the sides of the image because I want most of those nice details to be focused on the face and the shoulder area, right? That's where I want the viewer's eye to go. So I'm gonna leave these other areas a little bit darker. Okay, and you'll see if I turn that on and off now that it's only affecting that top part of the image. So now I'll select this layer, hold shift and select the cloak group folder, put them inside of another folder and change the name to main. All right, so this is going to be our main folder that contains uh, the base here of our main heroine or actress. So now let's go ahead and import our next image by returning to the file menu and choosing place embedded. And I'm going to navigate back to where my images are. And this time I'm going to grab this image here from Unsplash, this nice kind of snowy background, and then I'll go ahead and click Place. All right, and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit because I wanna make sure that I scale this up by clicking and dragging from any of the four corners while holding the Alt Option key to drag it out proportionally from the center. Now, once you've scaled it up, press Return, then press Command, Control, and the left bracket to move this down one position to just below our main folder. Now, we can change the blending mode of this to Screen, and reduce the opacity to about 50% by pressing the number five on the keyboard. Now from here, I'll hold the Alt Option key, click on the adjustment layer icon and apply a black and white adjustment layer. And once again, check off the box to use previous layer to create a clipping mask. Now we've just desaturated the snow and let's bring a little bit of contrast into it. So I'll select that smart object, go back down to the adjustment layer icon and this time add a levels adjustment layer. And here all we're going to do is just move the middle slider a little bit Let's see which way we want to go here. I'm going to set this middle slider to around 0.6 or 0.58 looks pretty good just to get some nice contrast out of there. Okay, and now what I'll do is select the smart object, hold shift and select my black and white adjustment layer, press command G to put it into a group folder, and I'll rename this one snow back. Okay, and while we're at it, I'm going to select the main group folder and just scale this up a bit more and slide this image up a little bit so that her head and face is a little bit more towards the top or center of the image. Now let's go ahead and add some more snow to this. So once again, go to File, Place Embedded. And this time I'm going to open up this first snow image here from Unsplash. And this one we're gonna put on top of our main subject here. But before we do that, we need to rotate this. So hold the Control key and click, and then let's go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. Now I'm gonna once again hold the Alt Option key and drag outwards from any of the four corners to scale this up. Once you've scaled it up, go ahead and press Return or Enter on the keyboard to apply those changes. Now, once again, we'll have to change the blending mode of this layer to screen so that we can see our image through. And we'll go ahead and apply some adjustment layers to this. So hold the Alt Option key, click on the adjustment layer icon, and then we're gonna add a levels adjustment layer with a clipping mask. And let's start by bringing this left slider in to somewhere around 80, 82, just to really crunch that black and white there. And then I can move this middle slider a bit too, not too much, maybe around 0.82 looks pretty good, 0.81, somewhere in that area. And you'll see that we now have a lot more contrast, which is getting rid of some of those 
mid gray values and just allowing the white snow to show through, which is exactly what we want. Now I'm going to select that smart object and apply a little bit of a blur to it because I want there to be some motion here. So I'm going to go up to the filter menu and choose blur, motion blur. And then for the angle, I'm going to set it to 48 and leave the distance set to somewhere around 68 like I have it here and then go ahead and click OK. Now that we've done that, I can throw this into a group folder and as you may have guessed, I'm going to call it snow front. I know I'm very creative with my folder names here, but it helps me keep track of things. Now we're going to add some more textures. So I'm going to go back to the file menu, choose place embedded once again. And now I want to open up this fiery spark kind of image here from Pexels. So go ahead and click place. And I want to scale this up as well while I'm at it. So I'm going to make that quite a bit larger. Press return or enter on the keyboard to apply the changes and then command control and the left bracket a couple of times to move this down. And I think I want it to actually even be below our snow back folder here. Okay, so because we desaturated that snow in the back, it's allowing the color of this image to show through. Now let's just play with the size and positioning of this a little bit more because I want to see some of these flames on the left side a little bit. So somewhere around there looks pretty good. And then we'll go ahead and apply those changes. Now I'm going to hold the Alt Option key and go ahead and apply another Levels Adjustment layer with a clipping mask. Click OK. And as you might have guessed, we're going to crunch the contrast here a little bit more. So what I'm looking to do is move the left slider in to somewhere around 17 or 18. And I'll move the middle one to around 1.5 or so. Somewhere about there, just so that we can start to get some more contrast here. And then I'm going to put these two layers into another folder and I'm just going to call it fire for now. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create a new layer above this fire folder, but behind the snow back folder and press G on the keyboard to get our gradient tool. Now up here, I want to select a radial gradient that goes from a solid color to a transparent, 100% transparent color. And for the color itself, I'm going to maybe use like a bright sort of orange color that will kind of pick up from the flames a little bit. So here I'm using the hex value FF6600, click OK. And now with your gradient tool selected, I'm just gonna zoom out a bit and click and drag from the middle out. And now I can kind of scale this up. And the idea here is to maybe place some backlighting uh, behind our main talent here. Now that I've done that, I'm going to change the blending mode to soft light. And that's just gonna add a little tint here above the flame. So there's more of a gradual fade happening. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and throw this into a group folder and I'll just call it soft light 100% just so I know what it is. Now let's go ahead and create another new layer above this one, press G once again, but instead of using a bright orange color, I'm gonna just darken it a little bit. Something like B6500B looks pretty good. Click okay. And now I'll create a second radial gradient here and I can scale this one up a little bit as well. But instead of using soft light, this time I'm gonna go with color dodge and maybe reduce the opacity to around 50% or so. And just scale that up and that's just giving me a nice back glow there. All right, so you can see if I turn that on and off, it's creating sort of a nice glowy halo effect. Okay, but let's push it a little bit further. I'm gonna create another one, this time just using a solid white color and I'll change the blending mode to overlay to make it a little bit more poppy. And let's just resize it a little bit, see what that looks like. If it's a little bigger, a little smaller, somewhere about there looks pretty good. And then let's duplicate it one time by pressing Command Control J on the keyboard. Okay, and now we can scale this one down a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is select this top white overlay gradient, hold Shift and select my color dodge gradient, press Command G on the keyboard to put it into a new group folder. And then I'm just going to go ahead and rename this folder backlight before playing with the opacity a little bit. So I don't think I need it all the way up. I think I'm gonna reduce this to around 40 or 50 or so. That looks pretty good. And once again, be sure to save your work along the way. Now I'm gonna keep building on top of this nice background that we have here by bringing in another fiery texture after going to the file menu and choosing place embedded. This time let's go ahead and grab this Pexels image here, this fire image, and we're going to choose place. And we want to make sure that this is placed above our backlight folder. 
And once you've done that, hold the Alt Option key and drag outwards from any of the four corners to scale this image up. And then let's just play around with the size and positioning a little bit here. Now what we're going to do is change the blending mode to screen and then hold the Alt Option key and click on the adjustment layer icon to apply a levels adjustment with a clipping mask. And this time we're just going to move the left slider in to around 14 or so just to give us a little bit of contrast there in the fire. You can push it a little bit more if you want. Maybe 16 looks pretty good. And now I'm going to put these two layers into a new folder and call it Extra Flames. And I really want these flames to stand out here behind our subject. So I'm going to create a new layer just above the extra flames folder, but behind the snow back folder, press G on my keyboard to once again, get the gradient tool. But this time I'm going to check off this box here that says reverse. And then I'm just going to hold the alt option key to get my eyedropper tool and sample some of this dark blue color from the upper right or the upper left. Now, what I'd like to do here is click and drag out from the center of the image to create my sort of inverted radial gradient and then change the blend mode from normal to multiply. Okay, and what that's gonna do is give us a nice sort of vignette around the outside of our image. Okay, so let's go ahead and rename this layer vignette. And then we can play with the opacity a little bit. We don't need it to be at 100%. Maybe somewhere around 65 or so looks pretty good. And I can create another new layer and just remember to uncheck the reverse box here. Maybe grab a linear gradient and just do one more of these from the top, right? Just to darken the top a little bit more. Maybe I'll stretch it out a little bit, slide it up, and then play with the opacity a little bit more. All right, so we're just getting a little bit more of a vignette there on the top that we can play around with. All right, now I'll throw both of these layers into a new group folder and just give it the same name, vignette. Now at this point, I'd like to return to our main folder here, the one that contains our subject. And let's just click on the arrow here to go inside of the folder. So instead of adding anything into this folder, I'm just going to select the folder itself, hold the Alt Option key and click on the new layer icon. Check off the box here to use previous layer to create a clipping mask. And now once again, press B to get my brush tool. And I'm just want to make sure that I have a solid black color selected with an opacity of around 20% or so. And all I'm looking to do here is to manually kind of paint in some shadows over the hand and the bottom area of the subject. All right, so we're just gonna darken this up a little bit. And since we're using a mask, we can always come in here later and adjust this if we need to. But I'm just doing this so that later on, I have a little bit of an area uh, to add my title and some text, okay? So we'll probably come back to that and adjust it a little bit. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and call that shadows and leave that there. All right, so I'll select the main folder once again, add another new layer, Press Command Control and the right bracket key to make sure that this is above the shadows layer. Grab your brush tool. And now I'm going to sample some of this orangish color from over here on the flames by holding the Alt Option key to get the eyedropper and then just clicking to sample some of that color. And using a large round soft brush, I'm just going to start to click around the edges here just to add a little bit of a glow all the way around on my subject. All right, so all around the hood here, the shoulders, the sides of the arms, we're just painting in here with a large, soft, round brush. Okay, but what we can do now is change the blending mode of this layer from normal to, let's try hard light. Hard light actually gives a pretty nice looking effect here. And you can kind of see what I'm doing, right? I'm just kind of painting in some of this light here so that it wraps around the edges of our subject. And then if I want to change the color of this a little bit, I'll just press Command, Control, Alt, Option, and U on the keyboard to bring up a hue saturation adjustment. And I think I just want to make this a little bit less saturated and maybe play with the hue a little bit as well. All right, so here I'm just checking off Colorize. I have my hue set to 25, saturation set to about 50, and a lightness, let's just bring that to zero. Okay, and that's just gonna change the color slightly. Now, I wanna really focus on bringing out some more highlights here in the subject uh, to really make this pop. And one of the great ways that you can do that is with a little technique that I like to use, uh, which is a non-destructive dodge and burn. So select the main folder here, and then hold the Alt Option key and click on the new layer adjustment icon. 
Now this time let's go ahead and just type in DNB for dodge and burn. Notice that the checkbox here is already selected for us to apply a clipping mask. And then we're going to change the color to gray. And let's go ahead and also change the blend mode to overlay and check off this bottom box here that says fill with overlay neutral color 50% gray and click OK. Now all we need to do here is reduce the size of our brush by pressing the left bracket key. And I just want to set my colors back to the default black and white. So press D on the keyboard to do that. And what I'm going to do is zoom in here, make sure I have a white color selected. And using this color, I'm just going to begin to paint in some highlights over the areas where they already exist. So I'm not really creating new highlights. I'm just pulling out a few areas here, like on the nose, the mouth, the face a little bit to try and get some of those areas to pop a little bit more. Okay, and I'll do the same thing here over this cool looking sort of like wolf pendant. You know, I want her chain to pop out a little bit, so I'm gonna brush with white over the jewelry, over her rings, just a bit. Okay, and we can also do this on the sword as well. So you don't have to go crazy with it here. I just wanna have a few areas that kind of pop out here. And we can do a little bit more work on the sword later. But already you can see that just by doing this, it's helping some of those areas pop out. And if I change my brush color from white to black, I can go in and brush over some of the darker areas, like on the eyebrows here, the eyelashes, maybe even a little bit over this paint on her face here. Again, only on the areas where shadows already exist. I'm just pushing the shadows that are there. All right, and using a low opacity brush. So let's go back to white and maybe bring out some of the hair again, just a little bit more. Just get some of those details. And then I'll paint with black here on the bottom, just in some of those shadow areas. All right, I'm actually gonna paint over this. It looks like a, uh, like a fitness tracker or something on her hand, so I'm gonna just cover that up, just so it's less noticeable. You can't really see it with all the textures we have going on, but I'm just gonna give that a little bit of love too. All right, and now you can see the dodge and burn helps give this a nice little bit of polish here. And now let's select the main folder once again, come down to the adjustment layer icon and add a hue saturation adjustment layer. And let's move it to the top of this stack here just by pressing command control and the right bracket key a couple of times. But make sure that the clipping mask is still applied, which you can tell by this little arrow pointing down. And now we're just gonna increase the saturation a little bit on this whole folder to around maybe 16 or 17, somewhere in that range, just to pump up those colors a little bit. All right, so now I'm going to click on this snow front folder, add a new layer, and what I'd like to do is kind of start to play around with the overall color here. So I'm gonna go ahead and maybe change my fill color to a nice shade of blue, like 3B87DC, click OK, and with your foreground color still selected, press Alt Option Delete on the keyboard to fill the entire layer with that color. Now from here, I'll change the blending mode from normal to multiply, and then press four on the keyboard to reduce the opacity to 40%. Okay, and then I'll press Command G to put this into a group folder, and I'll just rename it blue. And then maybe I can reduce the opacity of the entire folder a little bit as well. So I'll bring that down to around 70% or so. All right, and that's just gonna give us this nice sort of nighttime moonlight kind of tint on the whole image. So now what I'd like to do is spend a little bit more time working on our subject here. So the next thing I'll do here is select the main folder and I'm gonna hold the Alt Option key and just click on this eyeball. And what that's going to do is turn off every other layer except for this one, right? Except for this folder. And once I've done that, I'm gonna go up here to the select menu and choose color range. Now, once I have this panel here, I'm going to choose highlights. I only wanna focus on the highlights, right? And my fuzziness is set to around 20 and the range is set to somewhere around 100 or 102. And the reason I'm doing this is because I wanna apply some color adjustments that are only going to affect those brighter parts of the image. So I'll click OK to apply that selection and then hold the Alt Option key and click on the eyeball once again to turn on the visibility of all of our other layers. And then let's select our blue folder here to make sure we're at the top of the layers palette, come down to the adjustment layer icon and apply a gradient map. Okay, so you can see in the layer mask here that our selection is indeed 
what we want it to be, but now we just need to change the colors in the gradient map. So I'm gonna click on this little gradient editor here, the strip at the top. So let's go ahead and change these colors a little bit. I'll select this left color and maybe change it to a slightly different blue. So I'll go with 00A8FF, it's a little bit lighter. And now I'll double click on the white color here. And now I'll click on the white color here on the bottom and change this to maybe a warm color like FF78000 so that we have a blue to orange sort of gradient map and then click OK to apply the changes. Now let's go ahead and change the blend mode of that to multiply and you can see what's starting to happen here. It's really creating some nice dramatic lighting for us. So I'm gonna select that layer, press Command J to duplicate it and this time instead of multiply, I'm going to change the blending mode to divide and then reduce the opacity to 50% by pressing five on the keyboard. Now I'll put both of these layers into a new group folder and I'll just call it gel light since we're getting sort of a gel light effect and reduce the opacity to about 40%, right? So you can see we're adding some little bit of color there. So at this point, let's keep going and seeing if we can continue to push this further. I'm gonna select this soft light folder down here, go inside and just grab the gradient and I'll press Command J to duplicate it. And then I'm gonna move it all the way to the top of the layer stack here above the gel light. And this time I'll try a different blending mode like color and reduce the opacity down to 10%. So it's just a subtle warming up of the middle of the image here. All right, so I'll go ahead and press Command G to put that into a folder. And then I'll just rename this folder color, 10%, just so I know what it is. All right, so now if I wanna collapse all of these open folders and layers I have here, I can press Command Option Shift and click on this arrow, and that's going to go ahead and close any folders I had open. All right, so now let's go into this folder all the way at the bottom here called fire. And I'm gonna just grab the smart object layer, hold the alt option key and click and drag it all the way to the top of my layers palette up here. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is scale this way down, all the way down here. And we're gonna place this in the eye of the, the witch here. So let's go ahead and change the blend mode from normal to, let's go with lighten. Okay, and I'm just gonna zoom in here so I can see what I'm doing. And I wanna have some fire in her eyes here. I think that would look pretty cool. All right, so I'm just scaling it way down, as you can see. And then what I'm gonna do is hold the Alt Option key and click on the Layer Mask option to apply an inverted layer mask. And now if I press B to get my brush tool, make sure you have a white foreground color and a small soft brush set to around 20% or so, and then just start to brush in on the main part of the eye here. Right, just so we can see that fire reflecting in her eyes. And then let's go ahead and just throw this into a folder too while we're at it and just called fire in eyes. Okay, cool. All right, so let's zoom out a bit here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer, grab my gradient tool, change it back to a radial gradient and make sure that the reverse box is no longer checked off. We just want a regular radial gradient. I'll go ahead and change the color a little bit, maybe make it a little bit darker. Create a gradient on the top here. And let's go ahead and change the blending mode to color dodge so we can brighten it up. And I just wanna play around with the positioning here to see what could look good. I'm also gonna reduce the opacity to around 40% or so just to make it a little bit more subtle. But I like to start to add in some variations of color here. So kind of alternating some warm and cool tones. All right, so I'll press Command J to duplicate it. And then maybe move this somewhere on the other side here just to balance it out. And we can bump up the opacity a little bit, just see what looks good here. Now create another new layer. And this time let's go ahead and change the color from blue to maybe like a yellow, okay? Like a bright yellow. Like I said, just kind of alternating between cool and warm colors. And then go ahead and create another radial gradient. And this time change the blend mode from normal to overlay and drop the opacity down to around 25% or so and just place this somewhere over here, over the shoulder area, right? Kind of where the, the hood and these, these flames are. All right, and then I'm gonna duplicate that once again, move it over here somewhere to the top, top right over the hood, and then let's just bump up that opacity, right? I don't know if I need it to be 100%, but I can maybe bring it down to around, or maybe bring it up to around 60 or so, and just play with the size a little bit. And now let's go ahead and select all four of these gradients put them into a group folder, and I'll just go ahead and call it top light. 
pretty self-explanatory, right? The lights that are on top of everything, right? But you can see it adds a nice little bit of a pop there, a nice little bit of contrast for us. So now that we're starting to play around with some of these brighter areas and these highlights, let's go back to our subject for a second. I'm gonna go inside of this main folder here, and at the top you'll see we have our smart object, which had the shadows and highlights adjustment applied to it. And let's hold the control or command key and click on the thumbnail to activate a selection around the woman and the sword. Okay, and now I'll select the hue saturation adjustment layer, add a new layer on top, make sure that you have a white foreground color selected and press alt option delete to fill your selection with white. Okay, but we're not gonna stop there. Once we have our selection filled with white, go up to the select menu and choose modify contract and contract the selection by 28 pixels. Now, once you've done that, you can just go ahead and hit delete on the keyboard to delete everything inside, and then press command control D to deactivate your selection. So we essentially have a stroke going around the whole outer edge here. But what we're going to do is turn this into a smart object. So hold the control key, click on the layer, convert to smart object, and let's change the blend mode from normal to overlay. And then I'm going to apply a Gaussian blur. So go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and somewhere around 30 to 40 pixels looks pretty good for this. Click OK to apply that. And then what I'm going to do is duplicate this two more times. So press Command J and Command J once again. And we've now got this pretty intense outer glow happening. So let's select all three of these smart object layers here, put them into a group folder, and then I will just rename this edge light like so. And then I'm gonna put a layer mask on it grab my brush, make it larger, and we want a large soft round brush with black set to the foreground color. And I'm just gonna use an opacity of around 20% because I really like to you know, kind of do this gradually a little bit at a time. And what we're looking to do here is just dial this back, right? It's obviously way too intense, but I think it's sometimes easier to you know, go a little further and then pull it back uh, as opposed to just adding a little bit at a time. So I'm just gonna keep brushing over this area here and really only leave this area over the, the shoulders and the arms, right? That's kind of the, the main area where I want this glow to be placed. So I can brush out most of these other areas a little bit, dial it back, right? Because we don't want it to be overpowering. I do want it to be there, but I don't want it to look too overpowering. Okay, so something like that. Maybe even remove a little bit more from the sword up here. And let's dial it back on the hood as well. I'm just turning the visibility of these layers on and off so I can see the changes. Right, now we've got a nice glow happening and it's not quite as obvious as it was before. So now that we've added that glow, let's select the edge light folder, come down here and select our main folder with the, the main sort of group of objects in here. And then we'll press Command G to put all of these into a folder and I will just rename it Witch, right? This is our Witch. So let's go ahead and continue. I'm gonna select the top light folder all the way at the top, add a new layer to the top of my layer stack and I'm going to add another white radial gradient, change the blending mode to overlay. All right, and then I'm going to transform it. So press Command T on the keyboard and then hold the Shift and the Alt Option key and drag either of the left or right handles in just so we can squash this and make it more vertical, all right? Something like that. And what I'm looking to do here is place this highlight only on the sword, right? I want the sword to pop out a little bit more. So I'm gonna to continue to squash that a little bit and maybe I'll make it longer as well. So hold the shift key and pull it down a bit. Somewhere around there looks pretty good. And then press return or enter to apply the changes. All right, and then I'm just gonna zoom out for a second so I can see how everything's looking. And we can even try to duplicate that. I'll press command J one time squash it a little bit more, make it a little shorter here, and see if we want to place another little highlight towards the bottom of the sword. All right, and that's looking pretty cool. So now let's grab both of those, put them into a group folder, and we'll call it Sword Highlights. Awesome. So we're cruising along here, and I'm just going to do a little cleanup here and get rid of that background layer at the very bottom. We don't really need that. And I'm gonna do something here that I think 
you know, usually helps to tie everything together. And it's just a little finishing technique that I like to use to add a bit of noise to everything. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hold the Alt Option key and click on the Create New Layer icon here. And I'll just rename this layer Noise. And I'm going to leave this box unchecked. I don't need a clipping mask because I want it to apply to everything. But I will change the color to gray and the mode to linear light. And then check off this box at the bottom to fill with linear light neutral color 50% gray. Now click OK. And we've got our neutral gray layer set to linear light at the very top of our layers palette. Now hold the control key and click on the layer and change it to a smart object. And then go to the filter menu and we're going to choose noise, add noise. And for our settings here, we don't have to go crazy. I'm going to leave the amount set to around 25, but make sure that you have uniform and monochromatic selected and then click OK. Now from here, I'm going to drop down the opacity and the fill. So for the opacity, let's bring it down to 30 by pressing 3. And we can actually also adjust the fill using the keyboard shortcut 6 plus the shift key. So if I just use the numbers without the shift key, it will adjust the opacity. But if I hold the shift key and use the numbers, it will adjust the fill. So that's a nice little shortcut for you. All right, and then once again, just going to put this into a folder called noise to continue along here and keep everything nice and organized. All right, now before we go on, I'm just going to go into my which folder here, add one more new layer inside and just grab a linear gradient that fades from black to white. And I'm just going to fade out this bottom edge here so that it looks like the cloak of the witch continues to the bottom. Okay, and I'll just call that fade. And that way we don't have any, you know, hard lines there on the bottom edge. Okay, and we can also go into our gel light for a second. Just take a look at how everything's looking there. And something I want to do is add a little bit of a blur to the mask because I want to soften some of these edges here. All right, so what I can do is select my gradient, unlink it by clicking on the link between them. And then I'll go to the filter menu and apply a subtle Gaussian blur, maybe of around six, or let's go a little bit higher, maybe around 10%, just to blur the mask a little bit, and then be sure to relink them. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the one above by first unlinking it, selecting only the mask, and once again applying a Gaussian blur of around 10 pixels or so. Maybe we'll go down a little bit to 8.5. Okay, but remember to click that link icon to move them back to where they were before. And the reason for that is because if you need to reposition anything in your file and those things aren't linked, you're going to be very confused as everything except for this mask will be moving around. All right, so at this point, I think we're ready to start adding some text here. Uh, and our poster is looking pretty cool overall. So let's go ahead and select the sword highlights folder, add a new layer so it's just below the noise and then press T on the keyboard to get your type tool. And I'm gonna click somewhere along here on the bottom. And what I'd like to do is type out the title for the movie, which we're going to call Spellbound. Okay, and I'm gonna make that upper and lower case, change the fill color to white. And as you can tell, our tracking is all over the place here. So I'm just gonna reset that to zero for now. And for this, I'm gonna use a really nice typeface that I picked up from Envato Elements, which is a really great site for just finding some handy design resources. And that typeface is called Swashington, right? And what I like about this typeface is that it has some, some nice personality to it. It kind of feels like a supernatural kind of witchy looking font. I think now instead of using solid white, let's go ahead and change that color to C0C6CB, which is sort of a grayish blue color. I think that just adds a little uh, you know, personality to it without making it so, so high contrast. Okay. And then I'm going to come up to the file menu and choose place embedded. And I'm now going to bring in a nice texture for our logo. All right. So let's go ahead and grab this texture here from Pexels. All right. And I'm actually going to place this below my text layer and just move it down, play with the size a little bit. Somewhere around there looks pretty good. And then let's add two adjustment layers here. So with your texture selected, Hold the Alt Option key and click on the Adjustment Layer icon. And first, let's add a Levels Adjustment. Check off this box to apply a clipping mask. And I'm going to bring this left slider in to somewhere around 65 or so. 65, 66 looks pretty good. And then I'll move the right slider in towards the left until it's set to around 210 or 212. All right, just to push that contrast more. Okay, and then I'll select the texture again, return to the Adjustment Layer icon at the bottom, and apply a black and white adjustment layer, and then press Command in the right bracket just to move it above the levels adjustment. 
All right, and what I'm gonna do now is actually change the blending mode of my text layer from normal to color. And at first glance, you won't really be able to see it, but it is still there. Okay, so what we're gonna do is hold the command control key and click on the thumbnail icon for the text layer here to activate a selection around it. With that layer still selected, hold the shift key, select your texture, press command G to put it into a folder, change the name to TT for title treatment, and then while your selection is still active, just go ahead and apply a layer mask. Okay, so now you will see that the texture is only inside of our text here. We've used that text, which is adding a nice tint to our title treatment in order to create that selection for our whole folder. And what's nice about this is I can now kind of play around with the size and positioning of the texture inside of the letters a little bit, and maybe even rotate it a bit as well uh, without having to worry about adding any new masks or anything. All right, so that's looking pretty good. And then let's go ahead and add one more new layer just above our text layer. And I'll grab my brush once again, pressing B on the keyboard, make it a little bit larger, and I'm choosing a solid black fill with a low opacity, so like 20% is all you need. And I'm just gonna apply some shadows here to the bottom of our text, and that's gonna help to add a little bit more depth and dimension. All right, so instead of having everything just be very even, I'm just gonna add some shadows in here just to the edges, the bottom, the outside. And if you need to, you can apply a layer mask and dial it back a little bit if there's any areas that are too dark. We just wanna make sure that everything reads really nicely. And that's looking pretty good. And if you remember what I said earlier, we may wanna go back into this witch folder here and adjust our shadows a little bit. So I'm gonna hold control and apply that layer mask that we had there before, and then use a black brush to once again just come in here and brush out a little bit of the hands because I just want that title treatment to be nice and easy to read. All right, and something like that looks pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and add another new layer just above the title treatment folder. Press T on the keyboard and click to make some new text. Oops, I don't wanna do that there. I'm gonna add some text above it just so I don't select the wrong thing. And let's go ahead and change our typeface to something more simple, a nice clean sans serif like Avenir. All right, and for the weight, I like Avenir Black, and we're definitely going to want to scale this down quite a bit, maybe to around 70 pixels or so, 70 points, I should say, something like that. All right, and then let's go ahead and change this to say, uh, what could we do here? Some spells can never be broken. All right, that feels like kind of a nice line. All right, and then I'm gonna just click two or three times inside here to select all of my text, and expand the tracking setting here to around 205. And that's just gonna spread those letters out evenly. And then press Command T to scale this way down while holding the Alt Option key so it scales from the middle. And what we wanna do here is place it somewhere in here just below our logo so that it feels nice and sort of nested, right? I want it to feel connected to the logo itself. Something like that looks pretty good, maybe even a little bit smaller. And you can see how it just fits nicely in here next to the descender of the letter P and goes all the way across and is justified with the end of the title treatment here on the end of the D. All right, and then I'll just go ahead and change the color a little bit. Maybe let's go with uh, 838585. Nice little gray color there that kind of makes it feel more connected to our logo. And then what I'm going to do is duplicate this layer by pressing Command J and I'm gonna move this layer towards the top of the poster, okay? Because anytime you've got a movie poster like this, you wanna to remember to put in your talent names, right? So of course we have to throw those names in there, even if they're just placeholders. All right, so this same color I don't think is gonna work at the top, so I'm gonna change that to maybe a lighter shade of blue. Let's go with BED2D9. It's kind of a nice bright color. And I'm just gonna go ahead and type out a few names here. So I'll type out the name Juliana watts press command a to select all of that and then just increase the type quite a bit maybe to around 25 or so and i'm also going to modify the tracking once again by maybe doubling it let's go to 405 okay and i'm going to press command t to do a free transform and move this so that it's sitting to the left of the sword on the top of the poster press command j to duplicate it command t to do a free transform click and hold the shift key and slide it over to the opposite side of the sword. And then let's change this to a different name. So let's go Isaac Stone. 
All right, something like that. And of course, with a shorter name, you know, it just fits a little bit nicer on this side where there isn't as much space. And I think at this point, we can maybe make these names just a little bit smaller. All right, so I'm going to scale them down just a touch. That way we have some breathing room and the names aren't too close to the edges. Okay, and I can kind of visually center them on the left and right sides like that. And now what I'll do is select both of these names, put them into a group folder, and I'll just call them talent names. And I'll do the same thing with our text here and just put that in the folder called tagline. All right, so now what I'd like to do is add some more details in here. So let's pick up the credit block, which I've created here. It's just the TMTD credit block. And I'm just gonna drop this into our poster here. Press Command T to do a free transform. And then I'll bring it all the way down here towards the bottom. But I think I wanna modify this so it's not quite as many lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and click in here, press my right arrow to go to the second line, then delete, add a space there so that we can just keep this to three lines. Okay, and you can modify this however you want. I've just kind of put some placeholder text in here, but I'm gonna press Command A to select all of this block and change the color to something a little bit more subdued so that it doesn't stand out quite so much. So I'm gonna go with 626979, click OK. All right, and that's this nice sort of bluish gray color. And I just wanna make sure that this is centered here. So I'm gonna kind of click and you see my smart guide popped up there and uh, made sure everything is nice and centered. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out a bit. That's looking pretty cool, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is put this into a group folder and just call it credit block. And we can select all of our text folders here, the talent names, credit block, tagline, and the title treatment, put them into a group folder called copy, and that way we've got all of our text in one folder, right? So that makes it really easy if we ever had to hand this file off to somebody else, if you have to make changes. Everything is really clean, organized, and easy to find. All right, so now let's go ahead and add some global adjustments here. And I love using global adjustments because it's affecting everything here in my file. So if you're not familiar with global adjustments, be sure to check out my other video on five secrets to great poster designs where I go into a little bit more depth. But for now, let's go to the adjustment layer icon at the bottom of the layers palette, and we're gonna start with a color lookup. Now here where it says load 3D LUT, let's go ahead and change this to crisp warm look. And that's going to immediately warm everything up, which you can see it's a pretty cool effect, but we don't quite want it to be so intense. All right, so I'll leave the blending mode set to normal. I'm gonna lower the opacity to 30 by pressing three on the keyboard, and then also reduce the fill to 30% by, once again, if you remember, hold the shift key and press three. Okay, so now it's a little bit more subtle, but we're going to add a few more layers here to push these effects. So next, let's go back down to the adjustment layer icon and add a color balance. And let's go ahead and start with our shadows here. So for the shadows, I'm gonna move it over towards the red until it's set to around 20 or 21%. And then for our green, our middle magenta slider here, I'll move that towards the green around 5%. And I'm gonna bump the blue up to around 14 or so. All right, and then we'll go over to our midtones and I'm gonna drop the first slider down to around negative nine to take a little bit of red out of it. Leave the middle slider to zero and then let's go a little bit more yellow around negative five. And then finally, we'll go to the highlights here. And I'm gonna bump up the reds in the highlights to around 15, move the middle slider to negative three or four, somewhere in that ballpark. And then move the bottom slider towards the yellow around negative 18 or so. Okay, so that's giving us a nice overall color adjustment there just to warm things up and bring out some of those nice colors. Now I'm gonna continue on here and add a hue saturation adjustment layer and I'm just gonna increase the saturation to around 15 or 16 or so to make those colors more intense. And then let's add a curves adjustment layer on top of that. And what I like to do here is sort of create an S curve. So I'm gonna create a point in the middle, a point in the upper right quadrant here, and one in the lower left quadrant. And what we can do is change the settings for each of these. So for the top, I'm gonna to leave the input set to 192 and change the output to about 187. All right, and then we'll select our middle point here. And for this one, I'm gonna change the input to around 135. And let's change the output for that middle one to 123. And then let's select our bottom point here and set it to around 66 for the input and 56 for the output. 
All right, and that's gonna give us some nice looking contrast here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add one more color look up here to the very top. And this time let's go ahead and choose tension green. And here, all I'm gonna do is drop the opacity down to about 30%, right? So just adding a bit of green in here helps to make it feel a little bit more realistic. All right, and lastly, I'm gonna apply a levels adjustment layer to the very top and move the left slider in a little bit just to get more contrast out of it. So I'm gonna move that to around nine. And let's set the middle slider to around 1.12 or so. And then what we can do is select that top levels adjustment layer, hold shift and select our first color lookup layer, press command G to put them into a group folder. And then we can just call this global FX, right? And now we've got all of our nice color correction layers here in one folder at the top. And you can see it actually really does make a difference between what we had before and now adding some of those finishing touches here. So before we finish this up, I just wanna give it you know, one more look. I'm looking at everything. And I'm thinking that the snow is interfering a little bit with the title treatment on the bottom. So I'm just gonna play around with the size and positioning of that snow layer a little bit more, the snow front layer, I should say, and maybe add a layer mask to it. Let's go ahead and add a layer mask. And then I'm gonna use a soft black brush just to get rid of a few of these pieces of snow that are interfering with the legibility of our title. Right, something like that. And we can even brush away some of the snow at the bottom here, just so it kind of fades out to the black. Right, and these are just, you know, details, finishing touches as we wrap up our poster. Right, so if you want to make any other adjustments to, uh, you know, the size, the scale, the positioning of some of these elements, you know, now is a good time to, to make some of those adjustments here. All right, so I'm just kind of going through some of my different layers, taking a look at the, the lights that we've added. Maybe I'll move this one around a little bit more. I might make that light a little bit darker. All right, so I'm just selecting this light inside of the top light folder, and I'm just gonna darken it a bit using a hue saturation adjustment layer. Right, and I'll do the same thing on the first one here as well. Just press Command, Control, Option, and U on the keyboard. And we're just gonna change that color a little bit. That looks pretty good. Just playing around with some of those colors. Okay, and now what we're going to do, just to put some finishing touches on this, is one of my favorites, which is the Camera Raw Filter. So before we do that, we need to go ahead and merge all these layers together. And in order to do that, we'll use the keyboard shortcut Command, Control, plus Alt, Option, plus shift and E on the keyboard. All right, and that's going to merge all the folders and layers we have here into one layer at the very top. And I'll now hold the control key, convert it to a smart object. And then I'm going to rename this camera raw. And from here, we'll go up to the filter menu and choose camera raw filter. Now this is really where I like to go in and just tinker with some of these settings before I save out my final file. So while this is not a exact uh, science, you know, sometimes you have to experiment with this a little bit, um, but these are the settings that I found work best for this image. For the temperature, I'm gonna move this to around negative 12, just to bring a little bit of blue back in. Then we're gonna pull the tint down to around negative five. The contrast I wanna bump up to around 20 or so. And then I also wanna bring out the shadows because it's getting a little too dark, but you can see here, if I pull the shadows way up, we're getting some of those nice details back, which looks pretty nice. All right, so I don't want it to be completely black. You can see what happens if I move it all the way to the left. I might want that set somewhere around, you know, 30 or 40, somewhere in the middle. And then I'm gonna come down here to clarity and just bump this up to 10, just to get a little bit more detail. It's kind of like a sharpening or a high pass almost. All right, but I'm gonna set that somewhere to 10 to 12, drop the dehaze down to about negative five, increase the vibrance to around 10 and desaturate this slightly, maybe negative five, somewhere between five and 10 looks pretty good. Okay, and then let's go ahead and click okay to apply all of those changes and you'll see right away the difference in our image. So this is before the camera raw filter and this is after the camera raw filter. So again, this is a little bit too intense. So I'm gonna just go ahead and split the difference here 
and just lower the opacity maybe to around 50 or 60 percent. So we still have, you know, a lot of those things showing through, but it's just not quite as intense as it was before. And the last thing I'll do here is select all of these folders, put them into one group folder at the very end and just call it artwork. And now we have created our awesome spellbound supernatural movie poster. All right, so we covered a lot in this tutorial. It was, you know, I wanted to do something pretty in depth for you guys uh, where I really showed you how I go in there and play with a lot of these settings, uh, layering things up, compositing, you know, six, seven or eight different images together to create this nice poster complete with some movie poster details uh, from our title treatment and tagline to talent names and even the credit block at the bottom. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed this video and I hope that you can apply some of these things to your own poster designs whenever you're creating key art. If you did enjoy the video, please go ahead and smash that like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so you never miss an update. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Eric Vasquez here for Teach Me to Design and we'll see you in the next one.